coming at you not quite live from a bedroom in a house on a street in a town in a state in a country on a continent it's the film dudes podcast maybe near you (laughs) maybe that was a very vague description (laughs) um so yeah we're back Episode Yay. six, I think. I'm starting to lose count. We still haven't I, even hit I double lost digits. count after one. So. <laughs> I don't even know. Uh, we should go work for uh, the video game developer Valve. They can't count past two. If anyone gets that well, joke. Sounds like I mean, we have a little bit, yeah. <laughs> Well, the two most important numbers are zero and one, right? Well, technically zero isn't a number, though. Yeah, I know, but binary. Mm, it's really not a number? True. Yeah, it's technically like an imaginary number because it represents literally nothing. And so you can't have something representing nothing, but in order to have it not break people's minds, they just said, okay, we're just going to come up with a fucking zero, I guess. That's like the short I mean, story of math. <laughs> yeah, but isn't like zero... Doesn't that go back to like the Mayans or whatever? I don't remember. I feel like we're writing the script for that stupid fucking cube land. Or flat world oh, story. Oh, don't even go there. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> that movie just came back to me now. <laughs> Screw you and Martin Sheen. Yeah, I said it, Marty. Screw you. Oh, God. That movie was... Just, I don't even know what that was. It it was bizarre. Landon, uh, <laughs> I'd say run away. I if mean, you haven't seen it already, run away. I don't run. <laughs> it, 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 if you my manly physique, you would <laughs> you would understand that I don't run. <laughs> oh man! But what was it even called? Like Flatland, I think something anyway it's supposed to be like a very satirical take on like um economic hierarchies basically is it really satirical i i feel it more like it's a are you talking about friendly uh, dystopian or something i don't know yeah flatland the movie mm-hmm. is yeah. that kind of like the badlands um. Well, it's definitely one of probably kind. not. <laughs> oh man, it's uh, it's something that's for sure. Okay, I'll probably probably never see it. <laughs> I mean, it's definitely the movie you could get wasted on and not miss a thing. Probably might even improve the experience. Yeah, it would probably improve it. I know I watch every movie. (laughs) (laughs) Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, historically, that's what made 2001 A Space Odyssey do so well. It was like, it was a complete fucking disaster at first, but then a bunch of teenagers just decided to get totally baked and watch the like trippy colors scene and they're like oh man that was so fun hey let's all go together next time man i mean if i had watched eight and a half while i was high it i probably would have liked it a lot more (laughs) (laughs) oh geez and i know that's probably shitting on a lot of people's great movies list right there but excuse me i mean not not really, because clearly people just don't know how to tell art from baked quiches. Mm. Oh, how lovely. <laughs> I, I love that metaphor. Thank you very much. <laughs> oh, God. The things that we talk about before we hit record. <laughs> Yeah, if we talked about half the stuff we talked about before we hit record. 
<laughs> it would be pretty much just like every other podcast that devolves into I don't even know what It'd probably be like Bob and Tom really <laughs> which uh, I know isn't a podcast but you know I mean it would just be I think if I were to give you a visual description of what our podcast would devolve into would be like the mushroom goo from Super Mario Bros. movie. <laughs> you keep bringing up that movie. <laughs> uh. yeah, actually, Baking Ish is um, it's a reference. Uh, it, it, it's called, well, the movie is I hope they serve beer in hell. <laughs> and a guy's at a bachelor at his bachelor party, and he somehow ends up in an alley, and he's taking a leak behind a dumpster, and the cops show up, and they're like, "What are you doing?" He's like, "Oh, I'm just baking a quiche." <laughs> oh um, so God. now, a lot of times when I say that I need to use the restroom, I'm like, "I'm gonna go bake a quiche." <laughs> but but I usually refer to number two instead of number one, and. <laughs> So, so so now that the viewers understand the baking the quiche reference, <laughs> I'm pretty sure that they got it. Um, yeah, didn't necessarily need to give them that much of a visual. Yeah, well, I, I had to plug. I hope they serve beer in hell. If you haven't seen it, it's a fun movie. It's great. You 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 must see it. It's it's wonderful, and it's actually based off of a uh, a book. About somebody, well, I'd, I'd say it's more of a memoir than it is a biography because oh, it just okay. talks about, yeah, yeah, it, it talks about a portion of a person's life as opposed to their entire life. So. Mm. Yeah, you walk into Spencer's, it's probably the only book that's sold at Spencer's, uh, between the gigantic, um silicone rubber um toys i mean it's somewhere between the stripper pole and the fake turds so <laughs> you just gotta dig a little bit for it <laughs> love me my spencers <laughs> i know right greatest store on the planet oh my gosh the, the worst thing about it is i used to go in there on these yeah, I'll, I'll keep that a secret. <laughs> <laughs> On these um, spelunking expeditions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so what's new with everybody else? How's, uh, how's the week been? Oh. Besides <laughs> terrible from the presidential debate, pretty peachy. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Oh, let, let's not talk about that. Yeah. Let's <laughs> absolutely not talk about that. Beyond not talking. I mean, about if that. we're gonna talk about that, we could talk about the SNL opening last night. Yeah. I I haven't seen it, but I saw the opening on YouTube, and it, it was pretty funny. As Jim Carrey as Joe Biden, of course, and <laughs> and how he calls yeah. President Trump, and he's just like, ah, isn't this nice? We get we get a little break. <laughs> 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 creepy guy playing creepy guy. Yep, I see that. Yeah, and then he's like, "Oh, I'm gonna unpause him now." And then he unpauses him, and then repauses him. Nope, can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> I need to look this up now. Uh, yeah, yeah. Really, well, yeah I, I recorded it on my DVR. I'm planning on watching it later. I feel like yeah. DVR. Is slowly becoming like a weirdly outdated technology. Oh yeah, really? I mean, what happened to TiVo? <laughs> yeah, TiVo, man. Yeah, I still remember like going over to my friend's house, and be like, "Let's watch Pokemon from like three weeks ago." <laughs> <laughs> I remember just taping things on VCR. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Like half of my dad's movie collection was. Was recordings on, on VHS. Dang. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that was just how. Watched a lot of stuff was somebody taped it on VHS. So. You know. Yeah. Actually, I mean, it, 
I, I, I remember when I was a kid, and this may make me sound old, but <laughs> I, I remember, like, my parents told me I couldn't watch Dumbo anymore. <laughs> and, and, of course, and, and, you know, back then it was the cartoon. It wasn't the one that Stu loved so much, but... Yeah, it, it turned out they kept telling me, "Well, we have a v, we we have a VCR now," and I'm like, "What's a VCR?" They're like, "Well, our Dumbo is on beta." <laughs> oh my god, that's like literally dead technology. <laughs> yeah, I know. I I, it, it's like saying eight tracks. <laughs> oh, we can't listen to eight tracks anymore. <laughs> Oh my god! I don't think I ever. And I, and I could not wrap my head around it. I'm like, well, I mean, yeah, it doesn't. It, it's smaller. It doesn't fit in the VCR. I remember trying to put it in there, but. <laughs> oh my god. But yeah, I, I remember Beta. <laughs> Dang. I mean, I remember in uh, all that that documentary class Sanchez taught. Yeah. You were in it. Yeah, and she—I don't remember the exact technology, but she brought it up, and I kind of rolled my eyes because it's like, how young do teachers think we are? I mean, <laughs> I can remember, you know, VHS. I remember tape cassettes, you know. Yeah. So I mean, I was born in '96, so I got, you know, probably the. Not the tail end, but like halfway point, maybe. So I, I definitely remember, but I don't remember beta. So yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I I was born in '84, so yeah. yeah. I I still have a cassette player. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh man, my yeah. car. And I only have one cassette, but <laughs> <laughs> my car is so old that. I think it's either 07 or 09, but, like, that doesn't sound that old, but all I have is CD and tape players in it. Like, it doesn't even have Bluetooth and stuff like that. So it's like I had to go on Amazon and buy, like, a um, tape to, like, iPhone converter thing <laughs> so I can oh, yeah. play music off my phone. I mean... If I still had a tape player with me right now, I'd be playing a lot of, probably a lot of kids stuff, because I haven't heard that stuff in such a long time, but like, I don't know, Hank the Cow Dog, we had that on tape. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. I had totally forgotten about that. And it was the, (sighs) I remember which one, it was the second book. Uh. And it's where he gets his eyes crossed. Oh my god, talk about a blast from the past. I hadn't even thought of that for like, god, it had to have been ten years now. Yeah, that takes me back to my Buttercream Gang era. Ooh. (laughs) Wait, okay, so I just looked it up on Wikipedia. It's still going. Hank the Cowdog. Really? Yeah. Well, I knew the author was still alive, but I had no idea. Oh my god. 1982 to current. That's wow. insane. Oh That's man, me. yeah, I remember those like awesome like newspaper stories. That's probably where I remember Hank the Cowdog from was like the serialized newspaper stories where it's like, "Oh, tune in next week." <laughs> <laughs> well, the our teachers used to read us Hank Cowdog a lot, so uh, man, and I can still hear those voices. <laughs> <laughs> I think I did watch a little bit of the animated show. I want to hear what? voices too. <laughs> oh, so I'm not alone. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh. Man, well, I really haven't watched anything new this week. Kind of just been too busy. Yeah, I've I've actually been keeping up with Raised by Wolves, and oh my god, that is getting crazy. 
like uh, an android is going to have a baby and then it turns out to be like a lamprey you will it, the best way to describe it is, is if you've ever seen dream catcher you, you know the aliens that you know oh yeah the the, the poop monsters <laughs> the, i mean the quiche monsters <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it, yeah, it kind of looks like kids. that, but it can fly, and yeah, it, it, it's it's getting like really weird. But I'm I'm so captivated by it. It's is, it, it's nuts. So, what is the basic uh, premise of the show? The well, the basic premise is, is it's um like. Huh. What's the word? It, it, is it utopian? Pretty dystopian. much dystopian. There we go. That's the word. <laughs> yeah. So the the human race, the world is, you know, completely kaput. So they move into space, and uh, two androids take like six children or six embryos that have been fertilized to a distant world and only one of them survives and then wait is it six it doesn't matter anyways there's one that survives and and they raise this kid but then the religious fanatics they they raise them as atheists and then these religious fanatics who who believe in a god named Soul come to the planet and yeah there's like this huge battle and and everything and and, and now it's like androids versus or atheists versus you know religion and and then of course now it's like starting to get muddled where yeah, it, it, <laughs> it it's really hard to describe, but it, it it's it, it's captivating. I mean, it, as far as the the mise en scène is, it yeah, I mean, it's beautifully shot, it's beautifully done, but yeah, I mean, it, it it's like getting to the point where people are losing their minds and they're starting to go crazy and they're hearing voices and. And, you know, the androids are starting to believe in soul, and, yeah, it, it's just fun to watch. Isn't uh, Ridley Scott the creator? Uh, yeah, has yeah, he, he has a hand in it. I don't know if he's a producer or, you know, if he's just directed a couple of, I, I don't think he's directed all the episodes, but I think he's done at least a couple but yeah it i don't know how else to describe it i would say you you just got to watch it to to understand it okay and then of course i've been keeping up with lovecraft country and that's another crazy show but I'm, i kind of want to watch that cuz it sounds interesting. So like it is. The very, I, 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 oh, go ahead. The very limited knowledge I have of H.P. Lovecraft is like just Cthulhu, and that's it. Yeah, I mean, just right now as we're talking, I have a book of some of his stories right in front of me. <laughs> I mean, what I know of H.P. Lovecraft comes from, there's a there's a really good documentary called H.P. Lovecraft, Fear of the Unknown. It's on YouTube. I recommend it because you have people like uh, Guillermo del Toro and John Carpenter talking about Lovecraft because they're huge fans of it. Yeah. And uh, there's, there's another video. It's not like the whole video, but a bit of it, and it's Alan Moore. So the guy who created Watchmen ah. talks about Lovecraft and he's a Lovecraft fan but 
in terms of the writing, but in terms of Lovecraft, the person, Lovecraft was uh, definitely a guy of his times. Uh, racist, homophobic, uh, scared of women, <laughs> xenophobic. <laughs> yeah. And all that culminated into making basically the Davy Jones face looking squid monster dude pretty much but i mean <laughs> as soon as they said they were gonna make lovecraft country and i took one look and it's like oh yeah I can, I can see this yep this makes sense yeah actually all of my knowledge of uh lovecraft comes from um it's a film class that i took at ku and it was a uh, horror and sci-fi genre and it was um, done by uh, John C. Tibbetts. Oh, Tibbetts, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, and we talked a lot about Lovecraft. And and, and actually, his dad was a, a, a big fan of the sci-fi genre. I mean, John C., that's John Carter Tibbetts. Oh, my God. Seriously? Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my god. That should not surprise me. <laughs> wow. I never actually had the fortune to take a class or really even meet him at all. Um, yeah. But but actually, I, I do have uh, two of his books. One of them is about Peter Straub. Oh, damn. And, and then the other one is about Lovecraft. So, yeah, we, we kind of got in depth and. And of course, his teaching style was super informal, but oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, we we talked a lot about Lovecraft. I heard so he was I, a good professor, so now I that, really wish yeah. I had him all the more. That's probably my biggest regret uh, when I was at KU is I took film three with Tibbetts, and. I just could not think of anything to say in that class. And, you know, he tried to get everybody to talk and, you know, add their two cents. But a lot of the time I'm trying to find something halfway intelligent to say. Because the stuff he's talking about is just absolutely blowing my mind. Yeah. But it's yeah, like, but what, you, what do you it's say? Crazy how it's, like his entire class is a conversation. Yeah. And, he, and he wants people to chime in, and he, he talks a little bit, and he's like, oh, what have you guys seen, and what do you think about yeah. this and that? And, yeah. and you, you, and you can't was... take notes in that class either. Well, I did, so that's probably why I didn't talk so much. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, for instance, uh, he showed us the scene from Barton Fink where, you know, John Goodman runs down the hallway and the hallway is on fire and he's shouting, I'll show you the life of the mind, you know. Basically just talking about Barton Fink, the movie in general. And uh, Tibbet says that this scene, it's probably not real. It's going all in Barton's head. And Barton's head is the head in the box. And I'm like, oh my gosh, that just blows my fucking mind. And he's like, what do you guys think about that? And it's like, I have nothing to say because I really don't know what to think. To yeah. Say. So, yeah. Yeah. Tibbetts, I would have taken more classes with him, for sure, if I had the chance. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I took him for my last semester. I, otherwise, I would have taken any class that I could have gotten with him. He was... He... He, he was a really good professor. Oh, yeah. He's like the renaissance yeah. man of our times, from what I know about him, because, like, he'd he really paint is, a whole yeah. bunch of stuff. He wrote books, he did films, he was a professor. It's like, Jesus, what did this guy not do? <laughs> Brain surgery, probably. Well, I yeah, mean, great, they're, they're, past books, him. they're hard to read because, I mean, they're just... Like, documented interviews that, that he's done with people. So, it, it, it's like... 
I don't know. I found it really difficult to read his literature, but because I mean, most of what we had to read for his class was just, you know, it it, it was based off of interviews that he had with people about certain topics. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he's he's very well versed in complicated theories and so forth. Um, so, I mean, the guy is really, really wicked smart. So, yeah, he's wicked smart. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> oh jeez, <laughs> we walked into that one. Yeah, I did. Yeah. <laughs> I walked into my that damn door. Like <laughs> you like apples? Oh my god. <laughs> well, that reminds me of that one dumb commercial I keep seeing on YouTube all the time where it's like Host Gator or something. And it's like, look at me, I'm stuck in this car. Nothing feels... Hey, what's up? Discord just crashed for me. (laughs) What? Discord just crashed. Oh. So let's uh, rewind that to uh, (laughs) wherever we were about uh, (laughs) New England Patriots, and I'll cut that. Oh, go Pats. (laughs) Actually, I do have a little bit of history with New England. I, I did live up uh Nashua, New Hampshire for a couple of years. Oh my gosh. Which is uh thirty miles north of Boston. So Oh jeez. You didn't do any shipping up to Boston, did you? Oh uh well actually yeah I did. I worked for Amazon when I lived in Nashua. Oh. So I did a lot of shipping well at that point it was shipping down to Boston. So <laughs> That is perfect. <laughs> yeah. So that, that's good. If you hear barking in the background, that's um, my daughter. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow I believe that. <laughs> oh my god. All you got to say is my dog, Matt. <laughs> they know that's not a dog. <laughs> Wow, Landon, your dog can speak? What kind of dog is it? Um, it's a talking setter. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Funny. <laughs> you want to talk about the shows that you've watched? Yeah. Yeah, currently my uh, my wife is wrangling dogs up at Perry Lake, and my other daughter is at a sleepover. So it's just me and Tilly right now. Of course, with Max, he he's running around, but Dad. he's not being a jerk. Yeah. <laughs> Quiet. So, yeah, as, as far as Lovecraft Country goes, I would say um, that it's it, it's well documenting our our current situation uh, in this society as as far as like racial movement and everything like that. So I would. I would warn anybody who wants to see it that it is it's very racially motivated and it, it, it's a little shocking the first few episodes and, and it kind of leaves a bad taste in your mouth if you're white on, on, on how you know we used to treat people of color yeah. And yeah, and the, the first couple of episodes are, are that there's a lot of that, but it, it kind of shies away from that as it goes along and it progresses. 
It feels like Wilmot's work then. I mean, yeah, I, I, I would definitely put it up there with Wilmot and um, Spike Lee oh, and uh, and Peel. Oh, yeah. I'm honestly surprised none of them have had anything to do with Lovecraft Country then. Yeah, well, I, I don't know who the writers are. I don't know the director. I haven't really paid that close attention to, to who's creating this. But I, yeah, I, I mean, I would say that the first couple of episodes, if you're not of color, it, it, it may, that there's a little bit of a shock value. But I would say that it's also completely honest about, you know, how, how our race, or my race, I should say, is... It's kind of an asshole. <laughs> what an asshole! <laughs> so yeah, there, there there's a lot of um, racial factors a- in it, but n- it's getting to the point where that's less of an issue, and they're more focused on on everything else that is Lovecraft. I mean, they're vampires. Are like no vampires I've ever seen before. You 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 have magic. There's sci-fi. They, like the last episode, a lady was portaled to a completely different galaxy. <laughs> I'm not so... sure if it was a different galaxy, but she she was definitely. Yeah, I mean that there's horror. There's sci. There's sci-fi. There's Everything that's Lovecraft. So is it, like, about Lovecraft himself? Or it's, like, his stories kind of all just, like, blurred together? It's kind of... His stories are blurred together. But, again, like, the first couple of episodes, they actually go to... Well, I mean, there's a heavy reference to, to Lovecraft and his books. I mean, in, in, in the first couple of episodes, they actually go to a place that is in Lovecraft's book. And they refer to the book, and they're like, we're going to go to this place. Do they just carry around, what is it, the Necronomicon? It, it's not the Necromon... Yeah, it... It's not the Necro Comic Con. Oh, they uh, just gave up on it so quickly. <laughs> yeah, it, it's kind of a bit. Yeah, but but they they do reference the book that that heavy in Lovecraft's work. Um, but I don't know. You you, you have to see it. And in order to see there's so much to unpack. And and of course Omar, you know how, how I was sending you the the gif of uh Owen Deed. Oh yeah. With Omar. Yeah, he he's in there. Oh. <laughs> and he plays um he, he's actually homosexual in it. And and of course, I mean considering the area, the era He's, you know, a black homosexual. He's got everything against him. And, and yeah, I mean, it, it touches on homosexuality, racism, all sorts of different things. But, yeah, it, it, it does a really good job of incorporating Lovecraft's work. I would recommend it to anybody to see. Just know that the first few episodes may leave a couple... Well, it may leave a bad taste in your mouth, but... Well, just watch the presidential debate and then watch Lovecraft Country. It can't be that bad. Oh. Mm, I'd, I'd say watch Lovecraft Country and then watch the presidential debate. Oh, Jesus! <laughs> yeah, I can see that. In that order. <laughs> yeah, yeah get a little context before you start watching debates. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 
Uh, Joe, what's new? You got that script from last week we were talking about? Um, <laughs> so I was working on that, but uh, I got... I'm not sure. I must. Uh, I don't know. I'm working on it. <laughs> As the saying goes, dying is easy, comedy is hard. Indeed. So, yeah, I'll have Indeed. something. Um, so, yeah, I've been working on that. Yesterday, I finally watched Dumbo. Nice. What'd you think of it? What I always like about Tim Burton is nobody can ever accuse him of playing it for the money or whatever. He's a purist. And Dumbo is an expression of that. Oh, yeah. I really couldn't think of anything to knock it down um because i love a bunch of those actors i love danny devito i um, michael uh, keaton even when he's the bad guy is still cracking me up so. yeah. oh you want gumbo ava green <laughs> i'm in love with ava green so you know and probably not for her acting <laughs> you can't be a Maybe Monday I'll pick up some crawfish. But, uh... Yeah. I, I, at one point I found myself crying for some strange reason. So... Yeah. Yeah, it was pretty good. If anything, this is probably the episode that goes viral as, um... Landon's kid <laughs> is here. <laughs> <laughs> and they just started talking about Gumbo and crawfish. <laughs> yeah, my my daughter's asking me to make etouffee, but I I gotta get crawfish for for my etouffee. Ah, touche. No, etouffee is French for <laughs> to smother. Etouffee. <laughs> <laughs> a kid's correcting yeah. you Stuart <laughs> yes I've just been corrected, corrected by, by a five year old <laughs> oh man <Sir. laughs> well uh, my work's <laughs> <room's> done then <laughs> no you stay here <laughs> 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 yeah. oh speaking of Tim Burton though I uh I rewatched Beetlejuice. Oh yeah. Earlier this week, and I'm still not disappointed with it. I I love me some Beetlejuice. That's two. That's three. <laughs> no, he said it twice now. Uh, Beetlejuice. <laughs> well, we're screwed. <laughs> home, home, home. I undid it. <laughs> Yeah. I thought you had to say his name three times again to get rid of him. Hey, yeah, you said three times. Let's go. I'm so working anyway. here. Nice <laughs> fucking model. Hong Kong. <laughs> <laughs> so, Joe, did you notice any Jack Skellingtons in uh, Dumbo? I didn't even think of looking. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, you should have looked. I know, but I was so I'm caught dumb. up. The back, the vamp. Actually, Matilda's gonna be um, Sally. Sally from Nightmare Before Christmas this Halloween. Who's Sally? She's the one. She's the the sewing one. Yeah, the one who sews herself back up. The one that's in love with Jack. Oh, so like the only other like female character then. I mean Oh well, you want me to be Jack for Halloween? I'm not skinny enough to be Jack. 
Yeah, you're going to have to go through and fall in the chocolate river for that one to work out. Yeah. Well, what I need is, is like, a black base, and then I can just make a stick figure. That's true. <laughs> on it. Or, you know, you go on a one of those Christian Bale Joaquin Phoenix diets, you know? <laughs> just more eat like an, an apple movie. every day. That's your only meal. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. I can't believe my eye. You gotta do. This can't be the white guy. <laughs> and that's the whole entire one. For our listeners, don't have kids. Are you going to sing them? Unless you want a couple of laughs and, and a few screams. And a lot of baked quiches. Yeah. <laughs> I'd say every time I mean, she talks, my telomeres get a little bit shorter. <laughs> <laughs> That's a science reference. <laughs> yes, Mr. Doctor. <laughs> oh, and I guess I should say that I finally watched uh blade runner wait the we final watched cut. one oh yeah the original yeah the well it's the original original blade runner but it's the final cut oh okay we it's watched that one. Scott's preferred one so. which one did we watch then 2049 no, I know, but I thought we watched the original one. Did we not watch like the No, we didn't. Final cut. I mean, you bought it, I think, but we didn't get around to watching it. Oh yeah, that's right. Have you guys seen the the original Judge Dredd with Sylvester Stallone? <laughs> yeah. oh, gosh. I am the law. <laughs> I am the law. <laughs> oh, my God. It's one of those so bad I love it films. Like I really it's don't want to add it to my collection, but I would if I found it in a five dollar bin. <laughs> it is honestly that hilarious. It's yes, it is pretty good. <laughs> I still need Why? to see the actual dread, but I kind of don't want to from how like comically bad the Sylvester Stallone one was. <laughs> Well, I, I'd say Demolition Man is, is is a lot more ridiculous than Judge Dredd. Oh, <laughs> uh, which one was, was that? Seen awesome any of these? Right? Don't don't act like that. <laughs> I'm in the middle of a podcast here. <laughs> You're acting like one. You're acting like one. You're acting one like now. You're silly. Or a poop. <laughs> I can't. Yeah, I have no self respect. Oh my I can still take away from you, and you don't own both of them. <laughs> or you don't own Peel. <laughs> Zip zappity zoop zap, kids say the darndest things. <laughs> I love pudding. Putting my dick where it don't belong. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe you just said that right with your kid there. <laughs> She's not here. I believe She's not it. in the room. I sent her on a fool's oh, air. God. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> Are you kidding me? My parents back. Are <laughs> or, or the listeners. Did she find she a kazoo? She was out of the room when I said that. <laughs> she did not hear that. <laughs> <laughs> nope, you do not want one. 
by being a dummy. <laughs> when you're not thinking the boots. You're joking. You're joking. I can't believe my eyes. You're joking me. I gotta see. This can't be the right guy. Keep on thinking. That's all I know. I think I know more. Go get me a beer. Nope. You do <laughs> not want a beer. No. <laughs> I want one one if you um, sing all the, uh, all the songs. All right. All right. All right. You sing the little but Now you're going to sing sound. Sing us the song, You're the Piano Man. Uh, I think I know the song. I, I don't want to do you know So what else is going on? <laughs> <laughs> and a hard segue into something else. <laughs> Please, somebody bail me out of here. Uh, still oh, watching no. endless amounts of anime. Um... <laughs> Ain't really? nothing wrong with anime. Um, I mean, yeah, I've been kind of curious what you've been up to. You haven't been like bombarding me with all these. Oh, I watched Naruto, and oh, I almost forgot this, and it's like. Yeah, I had a film shoot uh, Friday, um, so I've just been busy like preparing for that. Um, I got to film at this really cool uh, house on KU's campus that's essentially where the guy who pretty much like reestablished the location of KU Med Center, um, that was his house. Okay. So now I just have to go in and like actually edit all the footage into something presentable. I mean, can you tell us what uh, the film is or not? I mean, I didn't sign an NDA, so I suppose I could. <laughs> uh, it's it's basically meant to be a promotional piece anyway, so it's about um, the Max Cod Center. Cada? It's like, it's spelled Max Cade, like K-A-D-E, but it's German, so I don't really know. Uh, uh, <laughs> but anyway... I forgot Mervyn T. Sudler, that's his name, who basically was a huge figure with the uh, KU Med Center. Um, just owned a house on campus as well um, and donated it to KU, which actually was a huge tract of land at one point that's now been subdivided into residential areas, the Kansas Public Radio Station, um, a fraternity is also on the original <laughs> property. <laughs> so, yeah, it, it was huge when it was originally all one yeah. piece. Well, at least you're doing something. <laughs> yes, at least I'm doing something. <laughs> Instead right. of photoshopping myself into Jurassic Park with my new green screen. <laughs> yeah, <it is. laughs> I'm still waiting for the photo that I sent you. I, w I want to see you in the, <laughs> yeah. in old oh, Summerfield. In yeah. creepy Summerfield Hall. The, I swear, when I first saw that, I was like, Jesus, this is Summerfield that's been photoshopped really well. And it's like, oh, wait, no, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, the old um, business school is now the film school's headquarters on KU, and it looks like some weird, like, psych ward in some places. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, didn't, didn't they use Summerfield as uh, the location for a music video? And it had that look pretty much of a psych ward? I think so, yeah. Yeah, it was, because it was a... Uh... It was up for the Tenzi's first year I was there, and uh, what it was like to Taylor Swift song or whatever. Oh, that's right. That's... And I'm working with the guy who was the mad scientist in that. Oh. I mean, it's been a while since I watched the video, and when I watched it, I probably had it on mute. 
What was it called? Like, look what you made me do or something. Uh, look what you made me do. Taylor Swift? Yeah. I mean, I figured it's something blaming her exes or trashing country people. Even though that's where she got her start? Pretty much. <laughs> but I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to say any more on that subject. <laughs> I feel like all the Swifty fans are gonna bombard the comment section and just be oh, like, I oh don't my care. god, I can't believe you're talking about Taylor Swift that way. Well, Fuck while her. I'm still on it, Keith Urban sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Kangaroo One of my friends sure. had a really good joke of like, what has 13 teeth, 50 legs, and 50 arms? The front row of a Garth Brooks concert. <laughs> <laughs> I would have been part of that joke if i ever got the chance <laughs> me too actually funny story uh 2015 he was playing in omaha and a couple of my friends one of whom is also named joe we wanted to go see garth brooks well garth brooks was playing the weekend of our graduation and we said, well, we don't really need to walk across the stage, do we? Mm. My mother says, no, you are graduating. So I am the only person in my family who has not seen Garth Brooks in concert. So. Um. Yeah, it's disappointing. Yeah, I remember the era where you had to have the tarp just in case. Well, it was like a Gallagher uh show because he was always drunk on stage <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. yeah that's right i think the only person i've ever seen in concert was weird al <laughs> i would have loved to see weird al yeah oh my god it was so good I mean, and the mythbusters except you can't really call it a concert it was like they're going away to her and they right. came through Wichita. Um, I saw, uh, well, I saw Billy Joel play at the, uh, oh crap, what, uh, the baseball field where the Royals play. Uh, oh, uh, yeah, a baseball yeah. field. <laughs> well, yeah. I saw him play there, and he has the been. The baseball field of Kansas, or Missouri, or whatever the hell it is. But he had played there in, I don't know, 20, over 20 years, I think. So Dang. it was, he, he's not going to be around for very long, I have the feeling, but damn. <laughs> he, the guy has not written a new song in, I don't know, probably 10 years or something, but he's still playing to big crowds. So. I mean, it's kind of, he's almost a one-hit wonder, though, because I really enjoy Piano Man, but that's about all I know. <laughs> uh, that's kind of sad, because he has a lot more that... Yeah, I started listening to some of his music, and then I honestly it just faded out of my mind, but Piano Man's I still mean, there are obviously some songs that I could do without, like, The Entertainer. Or was it River of Dreams or whatever? I could do without those songs, but otherwise, the guy's got some really solid <clears throat> songs. Like um, we didn't start the fire. <laughs> Shit, I always forget that that's I mean, his. It was always done, and did you do? I mean, it's basically a history lesson. So. Yeah. But the no, music video is actually pretty cool from what I remember. Oh, yeah. Oh. So, yeah, there's that. I'd say my favorite concert that I ever went to was uh, Scorpions. Ooh. <laughs> really? Yeah, they had Tesla open, and it was in Chicago. Ooh. And. Lizzie was 10 months pregnant 
and we were moving the next day. But, oh, my God, I absolutely loved the Scorpions concert. I mean, you could smell the marijuana in the air. and it was... <laughs> Yeah. Wait, Everybody Landon, you're was studying to be up. a doctor, and you just said 10 months, right? Yeah. That's a long time, actually. Well, I'm wrong. <laughs> As a doctor, <laughs> she was like seven months pregnant. I was going to say, like... <laughs> Um, that has to be a record, but okay, let's just gloss over that. Actually, no, she was eight months pregnant, and she was at a Scorpions concert with me, and and everybody's like, oh, you're pregnant? Great, wonderful, awesome, and and you could, like, smell the marijuana in the air. The the Bud Lights were, like, $10 a can. Jesus. We each had one. But we, we like jammed out to Scorpions and it was it, it was the best concert that I've ever been to. But of course before that it was just like Christian bands where it was you know, like newsboys. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. I'll <laughs> so So yeah, I'm not a strong reference on on what makes a good concert but yeah drugs that's what makes a good concert i i absolutely love watching the scorpions in concert oh i guess i also did tso a couple of times but oh and i've been to a yanni concert too i mean we came really close to seeing tom petty and the heartbreakers play at red rock Oh, that would have been fun. I would have given the lower half of my body, the entire lower half, to see them play. But uh, it was harvest, and so we were really busy. So I'd give the lower half of my body to never poop again. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm I don't sure know. There's something kind of relaxing anyway. about it. At least you accomplish something in a day. Yep. There's some days I get nothing done, but when I go to the toilet, it's like, hmm, I actually did something today. Oh my god, we have turned into that podcast now. <laughs> but yeah, Jesus anyways, Christ. I would have given anything to see them play in concert, and October 2nd, it's been three years since Tom Petty passed away, so... Oh, damn. Yeah. yeah. That was the worst week of my life. Honestly. Rip Tom Petty. Yeah. Rip. Yeah. Well, that's the thing about being talented is your music, your films, books, whatever lives on well after you. Yeah. Well, that's I mean, what makes them immortal. Yeah. I mean... Yeah, it sucks that he's not here, but I mean, you you turn on the radio, and it seems like the guys, especially if you listen to anything from their concerts, oh my gosh. There's a, I mean, there's a couple, but he's playing Breakdown in concert, and he says the first line, and then he lets the audience take over. They take over the song. Yeah. And once they get done singing the lyrics, then he's like, you're going to put me out of a job. <laughs> and they're singing it, and they're singing it on key and everything. Damn. And if you watch any of the videos from their concert, and he's just like putting his hand on his mouth, and he's like, oh my gosh. <laughs> they are going to put me out of a job. <laughs> um... Just total fucking badass. Yeah, I actually remember in my early 20s, I seduced a girl, break down, doing cat moves on a, on a bag. And it totally worked. That is so, so a if you want a, a horrifying move mental work, image to have, actually. No, no, no. Let me hear this story. I, well, back then I was a lot thinner. <laughs> and I was pretty spry. <laughs> 
<laughs> but yeah, I mean, I was like acting like a cat, and I'm like arching my back, and you know, doing all sorts of things, and and it's all right if you love me. It's all right if you don't. I'm not afraid of you running away, baby. I get the feeling you won't. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I... Oh, God, it was still better than cats, probably. Yeah, oh, if, God, if, if you want to make it with a girl, do some cat-like moves on a, on a bed, singing uh, Breakdown. <laughs> yeah, but first you actually have to get them on a bed. <laughs> No, she she wasn't on the bed. She was just standing in there watching me. Oh, that's <laughs> even weirder then. Because then it's like break down. Go on, give it to me. Oh god. Oh, god. A little chilly today. Yeah. All right. Well, now that the kid's back, I think that's a pretty good time to wrap up. <laughs> She's gone again. <laughs> I mean, it's your call. Uh, I mean, we're around an hour anyway, so. Well, shit. <laughs> this is all I, I had today. <laughs> yeah, I go to work. The only supervisor in the whole building. Oh, they they let you supervise? <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? What idiots. <laughs> Uh, well, and again, we are yeah. talking about the great state of Nebraska. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> ten and a half hours, I'm there in that building. Well, probably more than ten and a half hours, probably. Out. But so is there a furniture mart the near you? What? <laughs> Do they have a furniture mart near you? <laughs> yeah, is it just called Furniture Mart there? <laughs> <laughs> no, surprisingly, they still call it Nebraska Furniture Mart. Is it? Do you get a discount being from Nebraska? <laughs> I don't. I need know. a new chair. I really don't. <laughs> I, need, I need a new chair too. We were just talking about that before you even got here, Landon. Wow, I'm like psychic. <laughs> he is. Oh, okay, I gotta ask this question. Uh, so a coworker of mine, <clears throat> Marshall, you ever listen to this? He's of the mind that hypnosis is a bunch of hooey. Okay. Your guys' opinion? I mean, it is kind of because from what I hear, um, like you have to want to be hypnotized in order for it to work. And I think I kind of side with him because I've seen all the like psychic videos of them like oh uh here's a picture of this child who was kidnapped 13 years ago and they're like oh yes i'm sorry he's dead and then it's like oh that's him over there and it's like oh okay whoops well uh, i have a difference <laughs> a difference between hypnotist and psychics don't even get me started <laughs> i, I think mean, that hypnotism is your willingness to be open to suggestion right. and therefore it is it's plausible but i would not say that it's like an accurate work like some people are just more susceptible to suggestion and of course and they're you, called idiots <laughs> yeah well i mean you, you can also you know like it, it falls in the same line as meditation i think yeah, I guess so. My thing is... Where it, where it is beneficial and there is some validity to it, but I would not say that it is a 100% act of... Yeah, I mean, you can't hypnotize just anybody. Yeah. Well, that that's what I was trying to make clear it's like i'm not saying that hypnotism is 100 percent uh fail safe or whatever because i've seen a hypnotist twice not me personally i just 
college event. I saw them in the grocery store and said hi. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Um, but I mean, there's a difference between calling, acknowledging there's fault lines in it, and saying it's outright hooey. Because it's like. People who are skeptics who cannot, who have a very strong willpower, and they're like, no, I will not be hypnotized. It's like, okay. It's like recognizing different willpower versus, oh my gosh, you guys are fucking retards for believing in hypnotism. I mean, some, I think I hate magic because I'm jealous of it. That's my take on it. Yeah, agreed. Yeah, I wouldn't say that it's a magical thing. It's well, let, let's put this uh, mastery of uh, illusion, shall we say? The grand illusion. <laughs> I mean, it, to me, it's like. You, you implant an idea in somebody's head, and then they can do what they want with it. It's like, for instance, I could say uh, mustaches make people look like pedophiles. And you either agree with you that had to say or you that. don't. <laughs> of course I had to say that. It depends. Are we comparing my mustache or Joe's mustache? Fuck you. <laughs> well, Joe, he has that thinner upper lip like a pedophile. <laughs> But, but do you see how that works on your psyche? And yeah. you're starting to think, yeah. oh, well. I mean, it, the power of just. Uh, Am I a pedophile? Am I not a pedophile? Oh, that's not what I was going with. <laughs> Especially with you having kids. <laughs> well. So just I'm, say, I'm just inappropriate. Land, do not invite me over problem. to your house. Okay. <laughs> Well, you you can come over, but I'm gonna keep an eye on you. <laughs> wow. Yeah, you have a problem with me, but not not the guy who dressed up as a minion in the lunch line. Oh my and kids! Kept saying to everybody, banana. <laughs> I'll put it on. I'll put a banana. <laughs> yeah. So for but, listeners, but do you see how that's like working on your psyche and you're starting yeah, to question yeah, I... everything? It, it's the same thing with hypnosis. It's yeah. You are getting very sleepy. You have the urge to drive 21 miles an hour through a school zone. <laughs> yeah, but that's another rule of hypnosis: is is you can't make anybody do anything that they don't want to do. Yeah, but then like, how, so what? You go up to a hypnotist and you say. Okay, I want to act like a chicken, so that's when they say that, like, act like a chicken? Well, that depends. Do they want to prove that hypnosis is real? I mean, I guess we have to define hypnosis. Do they absolutely hypnosis believe thing. in hypnosis to the point that they're willing to act like a chicken to prove a point? But I feel like most people understand hypnosis as having your, like, free will broken. But that's not how it works. It's exactly. Yeah, we need we need an expert on this. Yeah, I feel sure. like Landon's the expert because he's the doctor. <laughs> I'm not a doctor yet. Yet, well, but you're I mean, becoming one. I, I'm working on a master's here. I'm not a doctor. You are technically a doctor because you're licensed to do. Uh, uh, not. I'm not doctor. licensed. I thought you were. I was a licensed massage therapist for for a really long time, but I let that slip. Oh, okay. So now I have a license. I, I I have knowledge. I've taught massage therapy. I've I've worked as a massage therapist. I own my own business as a massage therapist, but I am currently non licensed, and I really don't practice massage therapy anymore, but. What about cuddle therapy? 
<laughs> oh, don't get me started on cuddle therapy. <laughs> don't get me started on it, because I still want more fucking money from selling out on that shit. <laughs> it, it, to me, cuddle therapy is... It's like prostitution light. (laughs) It's like, I'm going to hold you. We're pretty much just going to pretend like we had sex, and then we're going to do everything Uh post-coitus. Which hold me because I feel so ashamed about myself. (laughs) After we watched that in the class, somebody leaned over to me and they're like, so when do they fuck? <laughs> no, my my true belief about cuddle therapy is is that there is a certain level of validity to to cuddling. I mean, human contact is essential. Oh yeah. Because we we are social animals. But to me, it's like paying for it. I mean, can't can't you just what what is wrong with you to the point that you just can't find somebody to give you a hug or a handshake or I mean, before coronavirus, it you still had like the freaking me too movement, which there's some validity behind it, but honestly, being in film, I'm of the opinion that there is a lot of finger pointing and not a whole lot of validity behind it. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm an advocate for validity. I've said it well, like what five times now. <laughs> yeah. You you have to have a valid reason, but it. I don't know. To to me, the. I understand why people are willing to pay but you have to ask yourself why do i have to pay for human contact i bet you that's what people in the 1800s were thinking too (laughs) yeah (laughs) i mean i get why some people have to pay for sex but (laughs) especially if it's really weird stuff But I, I I don't know. I feel like it it comes down to some psychological stigma, or or what's the word I'm looking for? Stipulation stigma. Yeah, stigma's stigma. about right. Yeah. Where nobody's willing to like give you a hug. Nobody's willing to. you know, reach out to you and and let you know that, you know, you're complete, you're a human, blah, 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 blah. Anyways, it it probably comes down to, like, a general anxiety disorder. Yeah. Maybe. Where you, you feel so anxious around other people that you kind of drive them away and therefore you have to pay for it. This has really gotten off topic. This is yeah, on that, to yeah. <laughs> it's about film. It's a lighthearted comedy show, and yet here we are. Um, well, on that disastrous bombshell, I think we're just gonna wrap it up, put a bow on it right there. <laughs> I recommend the Neil deGrasse Tyson, but I'm definitely gonna look up the Jeff Goldblum one. Yeah, definitely. Man, I'm really going to have to do some editing on this episode. <laughs> it's the second time Pardon my Discord me. crashed. You do what you got to do. I'm giving you material. You can cut it if you want. I'll give you I a just... couple dirty jokes and you can cut them out. <laughs> <laughs> there once was a girl from the Nantucket who one day said, fuck it. Really? I thought that she looked in a bucket. Uh, what was Not that the one? same girl, I guess. Where it was like, there was a there girl from Kansas City. There was a farmer City. who lived on a rock. He sat in the meadow just shaking his fist at some boys who were down by the creek. <laughs> now, oh, you guys yeah. ever heard of the girl from Kansas City? No. The one with the mole on her left titty? <laughs> <laughs> I know My her. dad taught us that when we were kids. <laughs> 
<laughs> Land's reaction her. just I know her. <laughs> You're talking about yeah. Sally Good Eyes. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, I never got her name. I was never into like, learning the names. So Are those two bottles? No. They're not brothers. Oh my gosh. Yep. Yeah, well, with that, I gotta go feed a five year old. <laughs> and some chickens. Oh, I just brushed my teeth. You brushed your teeth? Yeah. Okay, we'll eat in a little bit then. Don't you really want by brushing? <laughs> Minty fresh. <laughs> okay. So, right. Landon Hall signing out. All right, well, uh, until next week, we will see you all next time. Goodbye. Peace out. Adios.